we are live. Welcome to 2022's Nope Review and Thoughts. I told myself before watching, when I get out, YouTube audience, you and me, us, we're going to talk about Nope. So, I try recently to start these videos by saying how I think felt about the movie as it's I feel like this is a movie that I respect more than I enjoyed and it's definitely it was interesting it was definitely interesting it was well made and yeah I think that's this will be a relatively positive review and there will be a few jokes and I will get into some serious stuff. So, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And I am not going to get into spoilers before I get into the thoughts part. So, the movie is rated R for language throughout and some violence and bloody images. So, I might also swear in this video and talk about some of the violence. Now, I am gonna get directly into... Right, so, yeah... This video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. The most visual gets is when I sometimes act something out. So feel free to watch some visual like clips from the movie in another tab. I won't mind. I'll know, but I mean, I won't. I won't even know. Of course, I'm not spying on right now. I don't control a UFO in a nearby cloud. And. Yes, so, right, the, yeah, this is my first viewing, I watched it today, right before now vlogging about it, and, yeah, so I am not going to get too much into the details of the plot, I'm just going to say that a brother and sister badly want to capture on video something strange that's going on, which, you know, too few horror movie characters, but countless horror movie audiences think of this and would do it if they could. And, yeah, so it is... It takes place in the present day. I'm not sure we're given a direct um, date and year, but, yeah, you know, based on technology, it takes place right around now. Neither, uh, you know, neither far into the past or future. And it is set in a, let's see, in inland California. Yeah, I think uh, Wikipedia does a pretty good job here. Residents of an isolated town in California, among the ranch owners James and Jill Haywood, witness a mysterious and abnormal event. And that's as much as I'm going to give away for now. So, the... Let's see. Yeah. Like many others, the reason that I was interested in this is because it's Jordan Peele. I have not done videos on the first two movies he directed. I might do it at some point. Certainly they are both amazing. Now, one thing, you know, in, in this movie, a character asks the question, what's a bad miracle? Is there a word for that? I mean, I can't give you just one word, but I think... Trump's election win, just, yeah, bad miracle, very terrible miracle. No one saw it coming, but no one wanted, well, no one with half a brain cell in their head wanted it to happen. So, 
in the uh, right I am yes so I'm getting into the writing and this was written by Jordan Peele in the first two movies he directed Get Out and Us which he also wrote and the third he wrote Candyman 2021 Jordan Peele understands when to subvert the horror trope or expectation and when to play it straight if he always subverted it it would become parody if he always played it straight it would be predictable and yeah like he just he knows how to cuz this yeah so this is the fourth one this is the fourth movie he's written that I've a horror movie that he's written that I've watched and every single time he man like there were there were times where I was like just unbelievably tense and like and suddenly there'd be a joke and there were other times where it seemed like oh we're getting a joke and then nope violence or or some you know something scary would happen and that's yeah it definitely like others have pointed out there are too many ideas here and they don't gel and it's they're good ideas all of these are good ideas but it just I, yeah I, th I think I saw one critic say that it felt like he came up with he had four different movies he wanted to make and this is just the combination of all the yeah it gets it's it's wildly uneven at, at times the the um, uh, what was the um, yeah I can't I'm not gonna get into too much detail so I won't spoil anything but for sure you can tell that yeah you know he had a lot he wanted to say you know this is the first of these four movies where I felt like he just couldn't quite maybe there there there's a thing or two in the Candyman remake, a uh, reboot. The uh, there might be something in there that also doesn't completely go with the other things in there. But other than that, you know, Get Out and Us both really manage to. You know, I'm not saying they're perfect movies, but they are focused. And this one just doesn't quite have that focus. But, you know, it's Jordan Peele, so it's funny, it's scary. You know, you want more of these characters and their relationships and interactions. You know, it's a it's a cool concept that you like you can basically you can you can elevator pitch each one of these movies you know you can you can sum up each of these movies quite quickly I'm not gonna spoil I'm not gonna spoil this movie or the yeah once I get into the review itself I'm gonna the, the thoughts sections I'm gonna be spoiling all four of these movies so that I can compare but yeah like I th yeah, I, I think I said everything I wanted to do. So, yeah. Direction, also handled by Jordan Peele. I am just really quickly going to... So, yeah. I'm including... both the ones he's written and directed as well as the one he's only written so worst to best love them all the the other three movies of his yeah worst to best us Candyman, and get out and i know i'm not that's that's not shocking that's yeah now let's see so yeah Quoting a few fellow critics here. This is Peel's most divisive so far. 
like other of Peel's work, it explores race and class characters. Peel's use of close-up is effective. Not as good after the first hour. The more I found out, the less I was interested. The least of the three he's directed. Very funny and very scary. Some of the social commentary is awkward, like in Us, unlike Get Out. Takes inspiration from classic UFO movies. I wanted to spend more time with characters, even if it didn't have to do with the UFO. Love seeing Michael Wincott again. And keep David in the same movie as him. Love the relationship between OJ and Emerald. Jupe is funny. I loved hearing him talk about his childhood sitcom character. Inspired by Hitchcock, M. Night Shyamalan, and John Carpenter. The movie plays with our expectations for the kind of movie it is. Too many themes to explore. It doesn't have time to properly explore them all. I would, yeah. The trailer is nothing like the movie. And some people love the trailer but hate the movie. It definitely is. Like, it, yeah. It's, it's very, very different from, from the trailer. Some people say that it is slow... I mean, by today's standards, yes. But, you know, one of the movies that I want to say it was the... Uh, I feel like it was Jordan Peele himself who said that one of the movies that he took inspiration from for this is the original Jaws. And... I can absolutely 100% see that. And if you, you know, I, I just rewatched that one. If you... <laughs> this movie is not slower than Jaws. It is, you know... And I would, yeah, like, as a, as a quick, yeah, I think Jaws is, is quite good. It, it definitely, it works. It, it does what it sets out to do. And there's a, there's a lot of really good elements to that movie. But this movie does, you know, the, the, I definitely like this movie better than, than that. But I do definitely see how, yeah, you know, Peel clearly wanted to, to make, yeah, there's a, that's about as much as I could go into detail without spoiling. But yeah, like, you know, if you like Jaws, if you like, you know, the, the, older blockbuster movies, then you're more likely to not find this slow. You're not necessarily more likely to like the movie overall. That, you know, is more of a... Because Jordan Peele's filmmaking is very different from vintage Spielberg. But, yeah, the... the I think think that is about yeah like uh, the the um, yeah that that is yeah so let's see i'm not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad it let's see yeah, some critics say the climax is fun. Some say it's over long. I can see both points of view. I'm not sure. Uh, overall, I, I lean more in the direction of over long. And... Yeah, so according to the internet, I didn't stay to double check because I haven't been lied to on this. This movie does not have a post-credit scene or mid-credit scene or anything, so 
you know, once the credits start rolling at the end, you might as well just get out of your seat. I'm, I'm, I didn't see anything visual there. I guess it could have started a minute or two into it, you know, which was about, you know, I go for the, the very furthest back row, so, you know, it takes a little to, to walk out the door. But, yeah. That brings us to the characters. So, let's see. Yeah, so, Daniel Kaluuya plays James Haywood. Now, he runs the ranch. They used to be called upon by Hollywood Studios to provide horses, but these days, the studios consider CGI to be easier to deal with. Horse shit is one of the things that they avoid when going with computers. Yeah, he's... I've seen people theorize he might be on the spectrum. I think there's a very... That that may very well be. I thought he did a great job. Like I've seen him be like this is this is so far away. I want to say his character is named Chris in in Get Out. I only watched it the one time, and that was like half a year ago at least by now. So yeah, the the yeah huge huge difference, and he's completely convincing as both. You know, so yeah, um, I can definitely see. Listen to me sounding like... I, I'm aware that most people have watched it by now. It, anyone who's going to watch it in theaters probably has by now. It was delayed here. Don't know why. Yeah. It literally premiered today. So, he, here. I had been hoping to watch it. I want to say it was the 22nd of July instead of the 18th of August. But here we are. But yeah, like... For those who are waiting for it to hit streaming, you know, some people are definitely going to dislike his character. I found, I personally found him to be very easy to sympathize with, but, you know, I know that not all people feel that way about people on the spectrum. K Kiki Palmer plays Jill Haywood, very energetic and yeah like she is it's it's i mean jordan peele's always playing with stereotypes she's kind of the stereotypical black person you know she's she's brash and loud and always you know very chatty always using slang and and this like yeah i th i think jordan peele put the character in and, and wrote her like that, specifically to kind of toy with. Because I would, yeah. James is the, the protagonist. So he is the most prominent black person in the movie. And, the like, he's not the, the typical black character. So yeah, I th I think he's he's toying with expectations there, and yeah, like she's she's very charismatic. Now, I guess that is let's see. Yeah, so Steven Yuen Yu Yu is great. I really don't want to give very much away about his character, but just, yeah. And Terry Notary, like, yeah. Always love to see his work. And... Yeah, so some critics have said that they didn't understand or care about the characters. I would definitely... I... Uh, I cared about the characters. But there were definitely, like... Some of the things said and done I didn't completely understand. But it wasn't... 
it wasn't a big deal, really. Now, let's see. But yeah, you know, there's there's pretty decent diversity in in this. You know, black people, Asians. Latino, yeah, pretty decent. And I guess that brings us. So yeah, the the dialogue is is good. It is like there are a lot of very natural kind of like you you feel like this is how people talk. This is how. This is very natural interaction, and the characters, like you, you get a sense of who they are. They're not just spitting out information for to us, the viewer, to be able to keep up with what's going on. You also get a sense of who they are and their relationships, and you definitely get a sense. Uh, what's the yeah, the, the sibling dynamic between the siblings. You really do get a, a strong sense of who they are and, and their years growing up as siblings. Now... Yeah, so, quoting a few fellow critics, this is the best shot Jordan Peele film so far. Definitely. In his first collaboration with Peel, cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema opens up the frame in direct juxtaposition to the claustrophobia of Peel's earlier films. Indeed, Nope often has more in common visually with a western than a horror, aided by Michael Abel's score deliberately invoking Elmer Bernstein. Though the sublime vast space of the wilderness has just as much capacity for terror as any darkened corridor. And that actually it's hard to put into words how scary this movie is without the the characters being in in a very tight confined space which you know that's a great way to get us scared as well cuz you know the the tight quarters tight quarters means that you have less space to run away But making us scared when there's like, I mean, you, you, you look and it's like, what's it? there's miles. Go ahead and run. And you don't. And you're, and you're like, no, I think that might actually, yeah, um, I'm in danger. I'm in danger where I am. But I can't rule out it might get worse. If I move very much, Jordan Peele is a master of suspense. I, I'm not going to say he's the next Hitchcock, because that's what they said about M. Night Shyamalan, but he really, like... It was, it was, it was incredibly suspenseful, and I, I don't remember when I was last this scared, when it was bright and clear, like, there are scenes in this where you can see, like, you, you look, and you can see, like, far distance and the movie's still scary like the fact that there's no darkness and you're not in close quarters doesn't mean that it's not still incredibly scary and that takes a lot of talent like there there are some movies that do an incredible job with the close quarters but it is kind of it's almost like shorthand it's almost a cheat code 
you know, it's it's not very difficult to make something scary in close quarters. But taking it like and and I think I forget if I'm I think yeah, I'm not entirely sure if if this is something I'm remembering that he said or if it's just my theory. But I feel like Jordan Peele was like I mean every horror movie you watch it's like nighttime close quarters and and these these various things and he's like wouldn't it be cool to make a horror movie that was really scary but it wasn't dark it wasn't nighttime and you could you could see really far there's no there's no cramp quarter just yeah i i feel like he he basically that was one of the things he wanted to do with this he wanted to see if he could make something incredibly scary even though yeah and quoting another fellow critic, similar to M. Night Shyamalan's movies, you're often shown only part of a scene to increase tension and intrigue. The camera often moves slowly as it pans a scene, but then suddenly transitions into another scene, leaving you wondering what happened. And that's incredibly effective here. So the editing was... I, I will grant, there were... A few things where I felt like maybe it could have been slightly tighter in editing. I, you know, the the. I would definitely say the movie is at least a little longer than it needs to be, and considering the, you know, the the Jaws like element. Again, you know, just watch that movie. There really isn't anything you could cut from that where it would still make sense. No, nothing major, I mean. There's there's not really anything you can be like, okay, well that didn't really need to, you know. And I'm not sure there's major stuff here either, but I would definitely say things could have been tightened up slightly. Now... The special effects are quite nicely handled. I There was no point in this where I felt like I'm looking at a special effect. This is, this is something someone made on a computer. That never... Yeah, I, I, it always... It's, it's photorealistic. And like... I mean, I can I can point to things in this movie, and I'm like, okay, that has to be a special effect. There's no way they could do that without CG, but it's only because of that, you know. And and I never sat there thinking, was that a special effect? You know, it it was never distracting in any way. And there's the right amount of it, you know. There there are movies today where sometimes the the special effects people are like we can do pretty much anything so let's you know let's let's go absolutely nuts and just show you know basically show off you know show that that we can do all you know and that's not this the, this feels like it is that there are the effects that there need to be and no more. There's some really great stunt work. I cannot give any details, but just, yeah, very, very talented. And let's see, that brings us to. Yeah, so the music. Just the, the, yeah, I, it's, it's very effective. I'm, I'm not sure I have much more to say about it. The sound design. I, 
I don't watch enough movies to say what movie should win an Oscar. But if this doesn't at least get nominated for sound design, I, yeah. The, the, there are things that happen in this that don't happen in the real world, and they have to make that sound right, or we're just not going to believe it at all. If you're watching a, a horror movie or sci-fi or something, and you're like, oh, there's something, there's something a little bit off. For some reason, I don't completely buy into this concept. It might be bad sound design. It might be, you know, some. Sometimes it's just phoned in. Some some people think that it doesn't matter. That that you can just do absolutely nothing with that. I've seen otherwise strong movies really get destroyed in that regard and I've seen like I'm not gonna claim that Valhalla 2019 is the best movie ever made but it has some of the best sound design for a Danish movie so yeah you know but I think that is more or less so yeah the pacing is very uneven and let's see i wrote down when it started and when it ended so this is let's see yeah two hours and four minutes from the start of the movie to the to, to the end credits start rolling and yeah it definitely did not need to be that long and for some people, it will feel significantly longer. Now, let's see. So, the best element is seeing Peel's vision brought to life. I, I hope he keeps challenging himself, because with each of these, it's like... Nobody saw that coming. Nobody expected the Spanish Inquisition or the Jordan Peele vision to be quite, you know, so, yeah. I hope he keeps challenging himself. I do hope that maybe next time, like, just maybe get get a really unbiased person to just look over the script to to see if there's anything that cuz cuz I would argue most of the problems go back to the script. It would be difficult to recut this movie to where it doesn't. But yeah. Now let's see the All right, this is where I'm supposed to get into the worst aspect. I guess it would probably be how uneven it feels. And, yeah, the worst aspect, according to others, is that the third act just isn't as good as the first two. And with both of these, I really don't think that it's a big deal. Now, let's see. I... I was most looking forward to seeing Peel challenge himself again, and we lived up to my expectations. And let's see. so, yeah, the trailers do give away too much, but not everything. There are things that you do not see in the trailers that, yeah. And if anyone watching this video right now has the chance to watch it in a theater, some of the sound work deserves a theater. And some of the photography demands a theater. Watch, watch it at least once in a theater, because this really is just, yeah. Now, let's see. Yeah, uh, let's, 
Um, yeah, the cover and poster don't give too much away. And Yeah, so that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes. This has an 82% on the tomato meter based on 367 reviews. And a 68% audience score based on over 5,000 verified ratings. The critics' consensus is admirable for its originality and ambition, even when its reach exceeds its grasp. Nope adds Spielbergian spectacle to Jordan Peele's growing arsenal. And the audience says, it may not be the movie you think you're going to get, or even the one you want, but either way, Nope leaves a strong impression as a true Jordan Peele original. Now, of the 367 reviews, only 66% of them are rotten. The average rating is 7.40 out of 10. And the user, yeah, so 68% rated it 3.5 stars or higher out of the over 5,000 verified ratings. And the average rating was 3.7 out of 5. And the movie is certified fresh. Now on Metacritic, let's see, it has a 77 out of 100 based on 63 critics, and a 6.6 .6 out of 10, based on 162 ratings and 85 user reviews. Now, let's see the... Yeah, so on IMDb, there are 878 user reviews, 672. Without spoilers, I read the top voted 100 without spoilers and the ratings break down as follows 3 gave it 1 out of 10 23 gave it 2 out of 10 13 3 out of 10 8 4 out of 10 6 5 out of 10 5 6 out of 10 2 7 out of 10 4 8 out of 10 4 9 out of 10 and 5 at 10 out of 10. So, yeah, that is significantly more negative than positive. And let's see. Yeah, so it has a 7.4 user rating on IMDb based on 38,115 IMDb users. Now, 28.2% gave it 8, 22.3% gave it 7, 13.9% gave it 9, 10.8% gave it 10, 10.8% gave it 6, 4.8% gave it 5, 3.7% gave it 1. So, yeah, more people liked it of the people who voted then yeah and I think that is just about it for the review itself so yes I rate this eight mysterious events out of ten I wouldn't mind watching it again really soon I probably won't watch it again until it you know streaming or DVD or something, but I'm definitely going to watch it again. I want to, you know, yeah, there are definitely things in this that are, you know, if you watch it more than once, you'll, yeah. So, that brings us back to the this is this is the part where I'm supposed to update the ranking. So all four of the movies that he's written, worst to best, I do love them all. I would have to say, yeah, it goes us, nope, 
Candyman 2021, and Get Out. And that is it for the review itself. So, getting into the thought sections. From here on out, there will be spoilers. And, yeah, you know, spoilers both for this movie and also for the, the, ah, right on the tip of my tongue. Also for the other three that he's written, other than Keanu. Not familiar with that one. So, I almost forgot to note time codes. So I'm going to do that real quick before I forget again. And it is just about ready. Here we go. Okay, so there it is. No, you had it in there. Uh, what? Eh, okay. Uh, not a big deal. Okay. Notes taken while watching. So, my notepad. I like that the word nope is literally said before we're all the way through the logos. You know, and it does sound like, yeah, the, the, a line on, on a late, mid to late 90s sitcom you know so this episode is you know the episode is supposed to be from like 1998 and you have the, the one who's saying nope and you know applause and yeah that that sounds about right and that certainly is a there's just not how we expect to hear nope and yeah so we hear the sound yeah, we hear some some audio from Gordy's home. I want to say it's called, and we see the set and the bloody ape. I, it's it's legitimately like he is incre Jordan Peele is incredibly good at crafting images that stay with you, because this the bloodied up ape, and we see it tear off the party hat. And you know, suddenly looks directly at the camera, and it's just, yeah, it's just really off-putting to have the, uh, yeah. I forget. I read one critic. What was it? It was like it suddenly realized it was being watched, or so, something like that. And we see the debris falling, which hits Keith David. Which just, I mean, when is this guy going to learn just put on the goddamn sunglasses? I have to wonder if that might actually be why he was cast in this. He's epic in that movie as well. He's, I mean, he's, he's epic, period. There, there's, there's no such thing as too much Keith David. But I thought that was a, a clever, because like later in the movie, you realize, I, I, I mean, as far as I understand, that UFO was not intent, like it wasn't trying to attack people, but it's like, it can't eat that, you know, it can eat flesh, clearly, but it can't eat the coins and the you know one of them was like a, a key that got stuck in the in the horse's ass am i that's wow thank you jordan you, you got me jordan you got me to say horse's ass that's that's funny i he slays me i will i will please 
never stop doing this, Jordan, as uh, Mr. Peel. As long as at all you have ideas like this, you're you're too funny and too scary of a director to to not keep delivering like this. That you know, the UFO launched a car key in the horse's ass, and yeah, like you know, at first it's just like, what the hell is good, you know? tiny debris roll, you know, not roll, uh, raining down on you, you know, but later in the movie, it's like, oh, because it's eating, and it's like, you know, I mean, <laughs> I think I did see someone say, I mean, I guess that means that's its poop, and yeah, uh, some, something like that, yeah, um, The, um, right, that was what I wanted to say. I think that's a thing. Isn't that one of the things that the people who think UFOs are close to us, that, you know, oh, but there's this mysterious thing of, like, stuff falling down from the sky. And here it's like, yeah, it's, it's you know, it already, it digested the, the meat. So now it's, yeah, that was, what, what was the, the uh, I swear there was at least one other thing that I wanted to make sure to say, let's see, the, um, right, right, I, uh, you know, when, you know, given, given the, the genre of movie, I suppose it is a, you know, it, it makes sense to, to just briefly go into, I 100% agree that there is intelligent life somewhere out in space, which is good because there's bugger all down here on Earth, but I am 100%, you, you really got to show me some incredible evidence before I believe that they can come anywhere near us. Because I want to say, let's see, it was the nearest habitable star would, if, if you flew at light speed, nonstop, it would take like, what was it, 32 years, to, you know, just, just to get from there to here. So that would mean they had that, you know, high that highly developed, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't mean, is, is that technically even possible? Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't it destroy the ship and you'd have to go like the, the, like the generation flying the spaceship might not be the generation, you know, to, to still be capable of making contact once we finally arrived and that's that's if it's the very nearest star you know people people tend to forget how huge the universe is but anyway you know uh the predator said the, you know that movie said oh no, no black holes black holes is how they do it that would be very cool so you know yeah, if I if I see evidence of it, you know, you'll make a believer out of me. But for now, yeah. And let's see the I am Oh, right, right, yeah. Um so back to my notes. When they are in the car and you know, senior is is trying to, you know, it's important that if he, it's a yeah, uh, yeah, like he has to stay conscious and he has to try to use his brain. So, you know, he's he's saying the names of the horses to to OJ, who of course he knows the names. It's not a surprise to him, but we didn't know it going in. And I'm fairly certain every single name that he says there in the car later comes up. So that's, a, you know, that's, that's good writing. 
you know it's it's right there in the with within the you know first five minutes or so we get the names of the horses that will be important lucky ghost jean jacket ah crap i think there was at least one more but but yeah you know so yeah that's that's clever you know and that was let's see because that was before he sold lucky so senior still considered it his horse or their horse the the owned by the ranch because lucky being in that glass cage is a big deal for and you know the third act and they go to the set and OJ is you know barely able to like look the client in the eye and M shows up and you know makes a big thing out of it but then she walks off and the guy you know and I really appreciate like I I'm not sure I've encountered any review that read it as you know, oh, those those animals, you can't trust them. It's very clear this is this is a pro anim you know, the the um you know this this is about the ethical treatment of animals, so not PETA. What what PETA claims they're for, you know, basically. But the the yeah. The, the, um, you know, OJ says, don't look the horse in the eye, no, you know, no sudden noises, no, like, you know, yeah, stuff, stuff like that, and, yeah, like, the, the things that he said, you know, they end up, because, because they're like, well, we have a, we have a movie to shoot, you know, or, or an advertisement, I guess. I'm I'm not 100%. Yeah, it was an ad, wasn't it? Yeah. The the yeah, you know, it it's this thing of of a uh, ah right on the tip of my tongue. You know, the the things that they take for granted, the the crew are like, well, of course, you know, he he doesn't think twice about you know, it's it's the um, Let's see. I I don't know what it's called, but I believe it's for like testing like you know, he's got this like ball with like a mirror surface. And it's you know, it's a it's a way to to gauge what the what the light will how the light will reflect off that surface. But if you hold that right in front of a horse, it's gonna perceive it as something looking directly in its eye, it's gonna get spooked. You know, I yeah, I I thought they did a really great job. I yeah, it it really. I've seen a lot of movies that where where you're supposed to be like, oh, that awful animal. I I felt it was very clear here that this is not about judging the animal. It's about being like, you wanna you wanna treat it with respect. It's like the the yeah, and yeah, I really liked how. In, in that entire scene, the camera's very close to OJ. Like, he's not good in in social, you know, with, with social interactions. And, like, if you look at the rest of the movie, like, once he, you know, when, when he's with M, for example, he's not uncomfortable around her. He might be, you know, she gets on his nerves sometimes. But that's it, you know. there He's not, he's not. It's not a social, un, you know, awkwardness kind of thing, and you know, for a lot of the movie, like it's these grand vistas. You know, the camera is very far back from the the subject, so it was a very clear, very deliberate choice to shoot the these first, you know, yeah, scenes like that. Yeah, just the 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 movie set scene really. And I like that M, you know, casually drops in a line that she has a girlfriend. You know, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, it, the, the I'm not 100% certain if she, you know, if it's that she's only 
into women or you know I'm I'm not gonna split hairs but yeah I you know the it's it's representation and without like being it's it's in a very natural way you know like she's just saying like you you could easily flip the line and w essentially it wouldn't make a difference but it would mean less representation and yeah you know she just, I, I let's see i think she says it's something along the lines of she's she's telling oj i got this girl out in you know this this place and it's, you know yeah i i don't remember exactly she she was communicating some 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 situation there but you know the 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 thing I noticed was that she definitely said girl. She didn't say guy. So, yeah, it's... I, I really, really quite appreciate it. You know, and, and it is the kind of thing where, like, you know, once you have black characters, you know, black main characters, a lot of people are going to be like, well, why, why go any further than that? It's, you know, that's, that's the be-all and end-all, and it, it really isn't. You know, the, the sexual identity minorities are very much, you know, yeah, way too often underrepresented in media, especially positive depictions. Now, the, the actually, I also, I quite like, like, they're, they're going through the, the Fry's electronics store, you know, and they're, they're talking it over. And suddenly she spots this this girl like walking walking by, you know, and she's like, "Oh, hey, girl!" And and you know, looks after and and you know, as once once she's out of earshot, she turns to to OJ. Damn, did you see that ass? You know, just yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, that was it was it was funny. It was relatable, and. Yeah, I just, I, I really appreciate it that they didn't, you know, I'm, I don't tend to have a problem with, I, I don't think I, some, some people don't like, you know, they, they say, ah, oh, you're, you're rubbing our faces in it, you're shoving it down our throats kind of thing about, you know, outspoken not straight characters, LGBT characters. I don't tend to think, I, I don't, as long as you're not making them look bad, you know, there are some horror movies that make it look like they're more predisposed to violence, which just isn't true. But as long as it's not a negative depiction, I don't mind, but I do think that I feel like there there are different there are different things you can accomplish with representation in media and I think this is one where it just highlights some you know some LGBTQ people they just like they're as casual about it as if they were straight and that really is like you know the the woman that she she tried to flirt with wasn't like upset by it or something. It's not like she screamed at her or something. And the yeah you know this this is the kind of movie that if you are a young LGBTQ person, you know you can look at Kiki Palmer and be like, we're allowed to do that. Wow. Okay. I guess I will then. Don't mind if I do. You know, and then you have, like, I personally think a movie like Boys Don't Cry is incredible for showing how transphobic some people can be, you know. But, yeah, these two movies are trying to do different things with the LGBT representation, and, yeah. You know, the, th this movie is not trying to to do the same thing, and not every movie that mentions LGBT people should be 
boys don't cry because not all you know it's not always tragic it's not always yeah I like that when uh, when OJ is talking to to June Duke I think it was yeah Duke I'm pretty sure his name was Duke uh, you know he he basically says you know well the horse kind of failed I guess I failed too but the horse I can sell you know and and they joke about it but it is basically yeah you know like I I feel like it is. It, it's the, the it's yeah and they also I believe this is the same scene where they point out this thing about Gordy's home you know that's why you can't use chimps on movie sets you know it's it's, it's that's roughly the line and it's just it's so telling that it's not that's why it's illegal to use animals in on on movie sets no, it's just, oh, that one snapped. We better avoid its species entirely. Let's move on to something else we can exploit, you know. So, and now, obviously, OJ himself isn't particularly exploitative, but he is still, like, I guess, yeah, I guess it's not really him. It's just, like, he's making a joke. You know, it's, it's essentially, like, he sounds like one of those CEOs whining about how hard it is for them to lay off a bunch of employees because of their own failure. And, yeah, we're told some more about Gordy's home. And... Yeah, and, and OJ and M talk about Jean Jacket, Scorpion King, and it's such a great, like, because it's this thing of, you know, she points out she was so looking forward to that being the horse she got to train. And then their father was like, oh, well, there's, there's money to be made, so, you know, got to gotta train for the, and then I forget which of the, I think it was, OJ who ends up pointing out then they went with camels anyway you know and yeah it is this like you can't like the, there can't be just one horse that only goes to the door that really you know and then you're like oh well I mean no wonder she cuz you know she's like oh the ranch is my side job you know my real job is this other thing and it's like she doesn't feel she, that she really belongs on that ranch. She doesn't feel like there's room for her so much as just, you know, oh, she was one potential horse wrangler, you know. That's, I, I really thought that was a, a great, like, <laughs> Jordan Peele is one of the only filmmakers where I can watch one of his movies and be like, you know, I kind of just want to spend more time with these characters. Can you make like a, sh a short movie? Or may maybe like a, a limited run TV series? These are just so interesting. I, I really want to see more. Like, at first, she comes across as not very passionate about the ranch. And you're like, I mean, this is their livelihood. This is their father's, you know, their great, great, great grandfather's, you know, this whole thing. And it's like... She she legitimately felt like her father was pushing her away, you know. Why would she want to stay? It it really is, yeah. And the I I, you know, at first it seems like oh you know she's got her head in the clouds you know that's why she misses one of the greats, you know. But then later she watches her father do that pitch, and it's like right his great 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 grandfather. But her great 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 grandfather was the you know so she basically she she delivered it exactly the way or not not the way but verbatim what he said and that's why it was you know one try and that's like that's her way of honoring his memory you know the the 
to OJ, it's all about making sure that the horses get used in these, uh, you know, in, in movies and advertisements and such. But for her, it's like he's not really gone if I keep him alive like this. And OJ goes out and you see that ghost ghosted him. I really like the long take as they're walking down, you know, walking through fries. Now, what was the thing I wanted to... I gotta say, Angel, at first I found him very irritating. Like, the, the kind of... And I usually, I have a ton of empathy for... Empathy and sympathy for people who work jobs like that, because, you know, crazy hours, and they have to, like, people will walk up to them and yell at them for something they have no control over, you know, so, I don't know, I just, he, he was, yeah, I, I guess it got better, yeah, I think over the course of the movie, you know, I warmed up to him. And yeah, we find out that he was left by his girlfriend. I do, I did think it was kind of funny that like, you know, he's like, oh yeah, you know, she's this actress slash model, and this is her name, and this is her picture, and like, you should watch out for her. She's she's going places. But she left me. And it's like it's it's this thing of like he's he's trying to figure out if he hates her now or if he still loves her, and like because because this is what he did when they were together he would be like yo check this out this is my girlfriend she's an actress slash model she is going places you better remember her name she's gonna be big you know and just so yeah i i did think that was kind of fun like he's like he's he's not he's not over her but he's not completely like yeah it just i, I that really worked i thought I liked that the chapter headings, you know, at first I wrote they have horse name, they're named after the horses, but really they're named after the creatures. You know, first it's the horses, then it's Gordy, and finally, I mean, Jean Jacket, that is the alien, you know, I guess I should stop calling it a UFO, because technically it's an alien that looks like a flying saucer, which is also just such a clever, like, you know, oh, I wonder what the aliens look like and they're you know like the this this thing of uh, you know they're 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 transporting around flying saucers and it's like no it's just like it it somewhat looks like a flying saucer but it is an actual alien when the when 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 the short aliens kind of sneak towards OJ my stomach felt like I I was I was so freaking scared and then sudden and and I love it like you know at first he's like nope nope you know he's he's not gonna deal with him and then like one of them comes close and so he I forget I think he like punches it or something like he attacks it and it's like ow and it's like freaking kids what the the kids were wearing costumes and masks, and they snuck up on him to to mess with him, you know. And it's such, just yeah, like cause cause until the mask came off, we're sitting there like, so that's what they look like. Oh, stay away, you know. And then it's like, no, that's <laughs> and and like afterwards, you almost feel kind of stupid. Like, did I really think I I. Nobody can prove that I ever thought that those were going to be the movie's aliens. Obviously, that's this is just kids. Is it? But because if, like, the fact that the, you know, they are kid-sized, and and the the just yeah, you know, that makes them creepier. But then you realize, no, they're literally kids. And M wants to leave, OJ wants to stay, and they make the call to, I'm not even going to try, I know I'm going to mess up 
pronouncing it, so I'm just going to say Michael Wincott's character, who keeps referring to her as Horse Girl, which... I don't know if that's charming or condescending. Yeah. And they point out that the cloud has not moved. And I really thought it was very strange when M apparently believed that the cloud not moving was enough. Like it that felt really forced. Like Jordan was worried that someone was going to be sitting in the audience like, well, they're, they're done, right? That's the Oprah shot, the, the cloud not moving. It just... It, I've encountered this in other movies, and I, I will say again what I've said before. Just have... Instead of having a character saying, I guess that's it then, and then another character saying, no, 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 it's not it because... Just have the first character say... Obviously, this is not it because, and there you have it. You know, you don't have to make a character suddenly seem very ignorant. You know, the the first example that comes to mind is in X Men Two when they do that to Cyclops, and it's like he's supposed to be one of the smartest of them, and he says something that, yeah. And we get the Gordy flashback and. The Gordy Jupe fist bump, and they shoot the the chimp, and it is this thing of, yeah. I felt like so. Was there just not a punchline to this bit? Because, like, okay, so. Angel doesn't know what the horse, the the various horses are named. I'm at at this point in the movie. I'm almost certain. But OJ tells him, "I'm gonna get lucky," and we understand. Oh, he means he's going to retrieve the horse that they have named Lucky. Which I guess, ironic, or uh, maybe just coincidentally, is not very lucky because the the horse ended up getting sold. Because of the nicely done, Mr. Peel. Nicely done. Okay, so is the horse lucky because it got freaked out and ended up not making it in the in the filming bit early in the movie? And that did end up with it getting sold. But maybe it is lucky because Oh crap, did it actually survive? Now I'm now I'm struggling to remember if it made it all the way through the movie, but yeah, for sure, like it it's, it keeps going back and forth. Is it lucky or is it not? Because it is the only thing not eaten when the when the UFO takes Jupe and and the crowd. So that seems lucky, you know, just and and again, just having a character bring up, oh so is it lucky? Plants the idea in the old noggin, and I didn't even realize it until just now. But yeah, I must have been thinking, oh wow, that was lucky. Oh, that was unlucky. But yeah, I'm gonna get lucky. Like, you'd think that Angel would respond, is this really the time for sex? And he is unlucky because he's knocked down and unable to retrieve those. Yeah, but he survives, so that's lucky. And, you know, Jupe is trying to, to get the, the crowd riled up. So he starts by saying, are you ready? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Are you ready for some feedback? Which, again, I'm almost certain that was an intentional joke. Because it's like... <laughs> that means that you didn't... Either he shouted too loud... Ba you know, for the for the sound setting, or they did the sound setup wrong. You know, you're not supposed to have you know feedback, and it's it's such a like someone is about to someone is supposed to say something important, and there's feedback in the microphone. It's such an old joke. Like 
it's and and Peel makes it work. Peel makes it, you know, he reinvents it in this other kind of yeah. And yeah, turns out, you know, Jupe is going to show the UAP to the the crowd there, and he refers to them as the viewers. They've been watching us for some time, you see. It's not subtle. But yeah, it's just yeah. The the Okay, so if if I if I may if I understand correctly, I'm going to I'm going to briefly explain the the metaphor here. We are the viewers. That's that's fairly direct, which means not not that that doesn't mean that we eat people and horses. It means we consume entertainment, discard the stuff that doesn't really, you know that yeah that we don't like that doesn't completely work for us. And and then just you know, yeah, and and our appetites are what you know that make make a huge difference for, difference for the people we affect you know. And one of the one of the signs for where the you know when when Jube is is giving the you know there's this sign. I think it's for the for the back row that says Vasquez rocks. Hell yeah, she does. I realize it's probably a geographical a location called Vasquez Rocks, but I like it my way better. And we see the the one with the the face chewed off by Gordy, and the you know, and and there were some people who guessed that from the the trailer that you know people theorize. Some said maybe she's an alien. Another said, oh, like she got her face messed up. So, yeah. And, yeah, so we see the, the UFO abducting and eating. The... Crowd. The, the, yeah. And it's above the house, and they hear the screams. That was really incredibly messed up. And the, the bloodbath for the house and it's like yeah I mean I guess it's relieving itself over the house because that you know yeah the 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 blood that is left over when it's eaten and digested yeah very tense for the run from the house to the fried truck and I what crap i i wrote two things right the, yeah sunglasses at night was really awesome and they explained the rules for the ufo and michael wincott shows up and we get the montage prepping for the ufo And the, the bike guy turns out to be TMZ, which, like, the look, I really appreciate when you never actually saw this guy's face. And this thing of, like, he has, like, mirror, shit, like, yeah. I mean, at, at first, like, you know, TMZ would not have been my first guess, not, not by long shot. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I thought he was, like, from some secret agency or something and yeah you know but the yeah but it did feel like you know I I get it TMZ no one yeah I I feel like maybe it's TMZ because no one would care if he got hurt like you know the the yeah, Peel had to find someone that could, but it does also make sense that the TMZ guy would go there and try to find out. But he's in the movie for so little of it that this thing of like, yeah, it just, I, I mean, it's servicing this overall idea of we are, we can't look away kind of thing. You know, if you don't look at the UFO, it doesn't eat you. 
but we can't look away. You know, that's why Jupe and all the people got eaten, even though technically, oh, you know, I suppose they also didn't know what they were supposed to do. But technically, it seems like that that should be easy. Just don't, just don't look, just don't look. You know, so so. But no one managed to. No, not a single person was able to look away. And what was the other thing? Yeah, it was. It's you know, TMZ guy. That was a really cool look. I kind of hope that that has to show up as a skin in in some video games. That that was just this like shiny surface and the the one like I yeah that was that was really really cool and you know he they you know he drives into this thing they've set up the the field where the electricity is supposed to yeah and as he's lying there you know he's like please take a pic take a picture of me lying here right now and no, you use use a camera. This this whole thing, like even right before he's he's eaten, he's still like he just really wants a, a picture. And yeah, and the the. It ends with the. I, I did think it was sweet that OJ sacrificed himself. And. You know, it's a trope for the black guy to die in a horror movie. But if anyone has earned the right to, to have this kind of thing and not. And it not feel like, oh, wow, really? You couldn't go the whole movie without killing the black guy? You know, Mr. Peel has shown he's not he's not some self hating kind of you know, so yeah. And the yeah uh what was the thing? Right, the the you know, they do the, the thing with the the eyes and the fingers and yeah, the the you know, the wishing well which was set up. You know, and it works exactly the way that we were told it does. You know, there at the end, she uses it to take pictures of the UFO, and then we don't we don't see exactly what happens. But a bunch, you know, like I guess it would probably be police at first, right? And then press, and so, you know, are gonna you know, and she's gonna get to show the the pictures, and she probably will be famous, yeah. And they will be able to prove that there was that alien. And she manages to to kill it with the balloon, which, I mean, yeah, um, that balloon must have been pumped full of. Let's see, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's there's you know it's a specific kind of gas. It's not just air, which I have to admit for a long time I didn't realize because in this country we you know, like party balloons in Denmark at least when I was a kid I don't know about now we're just full of air you know so it I, I didn't realize when I was a kid that anybody actually used but yeah you know they pump it full of that that gas that means that it floats upward and if you were to like bite into the like yeah yeah like eat a balloon full of that gas yeah it's it would not be great for your in internal kind of yeah I don't know maybe she should have also said smile you son of a but you know you can't have them all that is it for that section so that brings us to the very last section entitled Notes Taken Before Watching.
So as usual for Jordan Peele, I would love to see a spiritual successor, but I don't want him to do a sequel or prequel, and I doubt he would. And let's see. Yeah, so the movie does an incredible job not overexposing the the UFO. You know, and I I fully acknowledge some people felt that it did. Now, one of the things, you know, I in, in the review, I compared it to the, the movie Jaws. And one big thing is that in both of these movies, you know that the threat is there. And you know that it, you know, it's, it's still dangerous. It's not like, oh, you know, whatever, I'll go do something else now. It's just a matter of time before it attacks. And in Jaws, and this is not a spoiler, there are these... Uh, I should remember this because I just watched it again. I think... Actually, yeah, I guess that is arguably a spoiler. I'm, I'm just gonna say, in Jaws, there is something that indicates where the shark is or you know close to where it is without us seeing the shark itself and in this it's the fact that we know it's in that cloud because that cloud isn't moving it's you know it's using a cloud as cover and it is like the uh, Um, yeah, and, and the electronics cutting out. That's another... We don't see the UFO, but we just see the electronics cutting out. And it's like, you know, okay, that means it's it's close. And, yeah, so I, I mentioned earlier, in, in the review itself, I mean, I talked about how you can see miles ahead, but you... you don't feel safer than if you were in a crowded area, you know. And yeah, like, the idea that, no, 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 if you, like, because it's, it's a giant predator. And the predator, like, it's, you know, it spends a lot of time basically just resting and, and waiting, you know. If a predator is just resting near you and you're completely still, you have some chance that it's just, you know, it's not going to notice you. Maybe, it, yeah, you know. There, there are a couple of different options for why it's not attacking. But if you try to run, that's immediately going to get a predator thing. Oh, there's food. Uber Eats arrived. Yeah, so so it's it's a great kind of... Yeah, it's tremendously impressive. And let's see. Right, so, quoting a fellow critic, the message slash theme is that we turn what we fear into spectacle, which, you know, in in real life, in, in the movie, the spectacle is different, but in real life, you know, summer blockbusters, which this is one of, and the movie's raising the question if we should do so. And I would add, you know, certainly a huge amount of fears are turned into summer blockbusters. You know, I already mentioned Jaws, that's about sharks. Avengers 1 and others is about 9-11. There are many other examples. And it, it is true, like, you know, we, we take these things, turn them into spectacles, and, yeah, just, it's, it's, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and some point out, you know, the message appears to be, if you abuse animals, then what goes around comes around. But the UFO eats animals, not only humans, but, yeah, OJ survives because he understands how to treat animals right. Juke dies because he doesn't. You know, the, the thing about, you know, Juke thought he could tame a predator, but you can't. And some critics have pointed out, the movie explains why no one could get pics or footage of UFOs. That wasn't blurry. And let's see. Yes, 
that is about right i saw one critic say why does you know i i can understand why the audience doesn't know what jupe is doing with the with the show until the movie reveals it but why didn't oj know and you know yeah i mean if oj knew he wouldn't be selling horses to this guy right like he would not want to because because jupe legitimately like if i understand correctly he was figuring you know the 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 alien is going to eat the horse i mean yeah i guess i guess he was thinking if i keep feeding it horses it won't eat humans and yeah that's like you know yeah you got to you got to be careful around predators you can't just compel them to, to, to yeah now, I was wondering if the movie was going to be saying that the aliens are there to save animals from human exploitation. That's why horses are being abducted and behaving weirdly. And then I joked, maybe Peel is saying vegans genuinely aren't human. Which, obviously, you know, I, I'm i not vegan myself, but it does make a lot of sense from a, from an ethical standpoint to be vegan. Now the um, let's see, but yeah, you know that turned out not to be the case, and the um, I guess yeah. So in Get Out and Candyman you know there are plausible explanations for the various strange things which is not the case with us really this one does also explain it by the end of this movie you know every um, what's the word there's nothing that was just there because Jordan Peele thought it was you know it would look cool or something which yeah I guess maybe that's what like you know, with Get Out, again, like, watch the movie, note every single weird thing, and watch it back, there's always an, exp you know, the, yeah, there's, there's an explanation for all the weird behavior, and, yeah, you know, Candyman also, once again, I love Us, I do think it's a great movie, but, it is definitely not, you know, like, basically, you kind of have to either be frustrated by us or accept that some things are just not logical, not like the real world. And, you know, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a good thing. It, it's sometimes extremely effective if you're trying to convey ideas for it to behave in the specific way you know, like, uh, as a, yeah, as, as a quick, you know, why do, um, in, in Tolkien, why do dragons and demons, you know, gather around gold? You know, I've, I, I've only watched the movie, so it's, it's possible there's this really well thought out explanation, but, the thing it does for the view for for the audience member is it plants that idea in the head in your head a lot of gold can be dangerous and that's what tolkien was trying to you know it's a it's an anti greed message in in part and yeah you know i i do think us like the the if you try to work out the logistics, it doesn't make sense. But if you just look at... No, no, no. They're the same, though. Like, the it, it's, it's so clever. It's so clever. He, ta he, he, he has this class... Ah, what's it called? So, you know, social commentary on class. And instead of... Like, because it's so easy. He has, he has a white family in there. It could so easily have been... The white family are, you know, upper class, and the black family are lower class. And if you do that, you're going to have a bunch of white people coming out of the movie saying, well, 
you know, it's their own fault. Uh, if, they, if they weren't black, they would, you know, things would be better for them. But he actually makes the black characters both the the benefactors of class struggle and the the ah yeah you know the the both the ones struggling and the ones who are already on top kind of thing and yeah it's just it's so clever and the, the this thing of like the poor try to mimic what the rich do and if you if you try to take it literally and say well you know what do they do down down there in, in these these corridors and there's the the you know that doesn't make any sense but if you if you take it allegorically and you you know and you look at it, it's like wow why do people who don't have a ton of money to just throw away spend money on stuff that rich people think is cool but that you don't actually need and certainly if you don't have a lot of money you shouldn't be spending money on that you know and it yeah like there's there's so much like peel mr peel has so much to say and i yeah i i really really hope he keeps doing this as long as he has ideas as long as he has the passion for it I already mentioned this is this is not my favorite of of these but it's really interesting and it's it's yeah like he yeah Let's see right Daniel Kaluuya needs to stop pick, taking pictures in Jordan Peele movies it keeps going badly for him and I believe that is everything I have. I'm going to just take um few seconds here to think of is there anything else at all that I wanted to say I th yeah I, th I think that was basically it but yeah I I have a lot of respect for making a movie in the year 2022 and it resembling a 1975 movie as much as it does. And once again, Jaws. That really is quite the. That was actually yeah. I I there are parts where where the Michael Wincott character is very much the the Quint character. Like when the the yeah. I am never gonna hear. Let's see what was it called? The Purple People Eater, the same way after after his rendition. So that is we have that is it. We have reached the end of the video. So please go to the comment section. Let me know what you know what UFO movie or or alien you know movie is your favorite. Do you think that this should have been different in some way? Do you hope for a sequel or, or what what do you hope Jordan Peele does next? What what subgenre? You know, okay, so yeah, he's done like the the kind of I forget what it's called. It's not it's not actually called social horror, right? But it's like horror based on like the people you're around kind of thing. He's done the the kind of isolated and you know mysterious. He's done a movie that's mostly like a, a movie that's very much you know black people and white people in America. One that's very much about class in America, and then this where it's this animal you know yeah the the and you know i i kind of love this this movie is technically in part a western it's it's a and in fact a weird western isn't that what they're called like a sci a sci-fi western has a specific anyway 
If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler film thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is She-Hulk. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with the things. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.